Wow, come on. Now it's a good time to share fellowship together. My name is Beulah Tokumbo Johnson, and this is our weekly Wednesday boost. And I just want to uh, share with you something that God has put in my heart, especially for those of you who are having problems with being controlled and who are under some witchcraft or some uh, system that are trying to manipulate you in any way. All right, so I want to speak on how to overcome the spirit of control, idolatry, and witchcraft. Yes, how to overcome the spirit of control, the spirit of idolatry, and witchcraft. And incidentally, a book I read by Thomas uh, Jennifer Leclerc actually spoke to this some time back, and it, I think it's, it's a beauty, it was a beautiful book. Okay, so today I want to look at the spirit that attacks the purpose and seeks to, to, to kill prophetic voices. And uh, this spirit is called the spirit of Jezebel. And I know many of you might have heard about Jezebel. I want to do, do a lot of uh, instruction around that regard to explain some things okay about this spirit it's a very very terrible spirit but it's also it can be overcome it can be subdued and it can be nipped in the board okay uh, there are actually spirits that look alike one is Jezebel's spirit the other one is Atelier's spirit and then we have the spirit of Balaam and then we have also I mean uh, the spirit of Leconucleitis I, I don't want to I don't want to I mean go before, behind for myself okay let's let's understand some things now it's important that this spirit there are some things about the spirit that I really want to bring in they seek for control they never want to lose control they seek to perpetuate their privileged position even if it has to be by brute force or usurpation or through inordinate ambition of any sort. These spirits are just about power and they're just about control. Yes, there are people, there are systems, okay, that seeks to do nothing or do nothing other than power and control. Uh, just like what people call the power distance index. Uh, you will, it, it differs from country to country. You may need to look at that. But it's something, and I want to look at what is the implication of this, okay, inordinate control, or in, in, inordinate ambition for control and for power. Okay, this spirit has held nations by is jugular actually and it has to be broken and the only system that can break it is the church of God that's what I'm trying to say so we have to fight this spirit we have to prevail against the spirit if the purpose of God for our nation for our families for our communities will be established we must never allow the Jezebel spirit to thrive because if we do not do that, the church will not be able to enter the fullness of God's plan for us. It's important for us to know that the good news is that this spirit can be judged and that the outcome of the lack of repentance by this kind of system, of Jezebel's system, of Jezebel's spirit, is death. Praise the name of Allah. Hallelujah. And so it's important to us to know that even today, we see Jezebel in operation in several facets of human life. Even in the church, I'm going to share with you a bit of stuff, even church leadership structures. Okay? It's possible that if, if care is not taken, the whole leadership structure of a church is run under the influence of this demonic spirit. And what it does, if it's allowed to fester, it hinders or it stifles the new thing that God wants to do in your local assembly. Yeah, so if you're a minister of the gospel, listen to me, you need to locate this spirit, I need to nip it in the board and deal with it. Now, there are also groups of people, okay, even governmental systems, political systems, economic systems that are under the whole, the stronghold of the spirit. You as a people have to know how to pray through it and declare spiritual warfare and break the power of this spirit, amen. Because if this spirit is not broken, it will break you. If this spirit is not, is not challenged, it will kill every prophetic voice that God wants to release upon the earth. Basically, this spirit is so terrible that it will begin to throw up also among other things, things like idolatry. And uh, that means worship that is not God worship, okay? Human worship, worship of systems, okay? Dogmas and, and philosophies of men will become the things that are being worshipped. So that's why it's important for us Okay, to know how to deal with it. So I just want to share some things with you in that level. One of the things that make it very uh, powerful is this, it has, it has a positioning. It occupies a place of prominence. It occupies the epicenter of power and authority. And when I talk about Jezebel, okay, the human physical Jezebel was a queen, okay, in the land of Israel. So she had authority. So she had positioning. So she had 
access, okay, to, to the palace of Israel. Okay, and so from that place of position and authority, she can do anything. So Jezebel's spirit has author authorization and it has a position. But you need to know how to locate that spirit and to bring it down. It's very, very important that we know those things. Amen. Let me share some principles with you from that we're going to read quite a bit of scripture and I want to read from the book of 1 Kings chapter 18 so that we get introduced to this and I also read the book of 1 Kings 19 so that we can get introduced very properly to the principle that I'm sharing with you today. If you're just joining us again, I'm speaking on how to overcome the spirit of control, idolatry and witchcraft, which we call in other language, in the prophetic language, Jezebel spirit, how to defeat the Jezebel spirit. The book of 1 Kings chapter 18 documents and says, from verse 1 to 4, and I also read verse, verse 13, it says, After a long time in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the land. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Now the famine was very severe in Samaria, and Ahab had summoned Obadiah. Now let me, it's important for me to explain that Ahab was the king of Israel, and his wife was Jezebel, so that you understand the context of it. And so this is, was a king who was running a whole country, and was married to a woman called Jezebel. And let's look at what happened. The Bible says, verse 3, And Ahab had summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of his palace. Obadiah was a devout believer in the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Verse 4 says, While Jezebel was killing off the lost prophets, and that's what the spirit of Jezebel does. It kills off the lost prophet. The agenda of Jezebel is to stifle or destroy God's prophetic voices. Okay, well, at whatever level. Okay, now, you know that it's by prophetic voice that nations are delivered and that families are delivered. And it is by the prophetic ministry of prophetic impartation that all families and nations are preserved. And so you can imagine the implication of when a prophetic dimension of God is stifled or killed outright. That means there's going to be a lot of damage to the life of the people. So that's what Jezebel represents. It represents that system that seeks to stifle or talk together, kill the lost God's prophetic voices. And that's why you have to bring it down. I want to challenge you. That's why you have to bring that. The whole essence of this study with you is to put in your hand tools and things you need to know, how to pray and how to, things you need to know to pull down the spirit so that it doesn't pull your ministry down, so that it doesn't pull your marriage down, so that it doesn't pull even your nation down. Very, very important. So we have to be that, that prophetically inclined church that understands that there is an attack against our advance. There is an attack against our fulfilling the purpose that God asks for us. I want you to please go with me. So in verse 4 it says, So while Jezebel was killing off the lost prophets, Obadiah, had taken a hundred prophets and hidden them in two caves, fifty in each, and he had supplied them with food and water. And the Bible says in verse 13, haven't you heard, my Lord? So, what I was now telling Elijah in verse 13 says, Haven't you heard, my Lord, what I did while Jezebel was killing off the lost prophets? I hid a hundred of the lost prophets in two caves, 15 each, and supplied them with food and water. So, here were two principles the principle of Jezebel that kills the prophet or the prophetic voices, and the principle of Obadiah, stored in Obadiah, who protects protective voices, prophetic voices, and keeps them from harm's way. Now, I want you to please follow me. It's very important. Now, in chapter 19, because it's a Bible study, I want us to really read this story and understand it. In chapter 19 of 1 Kings, chapter 19, from verse 1 to 4, and then I'll also read verse 10 to 18. The Bible says, after the encounter on Mount Carmel, now that encounter I shared with you last time, when there was an encounter between the prophets of Baal and one prophet of God, which was Elijah. And Elijah called down fire from above because he did the right thing, brought the whole system into alignment and into divine order, and the fire of God fell, and God, you know, God's glory came back upon the land. And the whole 850 prophets of Baal couldn't stand against the impact of what Elijah, one man, did. The Bible says that the people, the 850 prophets, of Baal was slaughtered by the people. All right, so after the experience, Ahab got home. And this was how the story now began. In 1 Kings 19, verse 1, it says, Now Ahab told Jezebel 
his wife. Everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Now, you know that it wasn't Elijah that killed them. Okay, it was the people that killed them. When their hearts were turned back to God, the people knew what was right to do. And that always happens. When people come to a realization that they have been deceived for so long, they know what to do to take their lives back, to take their destinies back. And so that's what they did. They took their destinies back. Okay, they served justice to the false prophets of Baal. And so Ahab got home and was now reporting this to his wife. And the Bible says in verse 2, So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of all those prophets. Verse 3 says, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. Now, that, that, that looks strange, but that is how strong Jezebel's spirit is. Now, this prophet had just wasted, with one word from the Lord, 800 false systems, false prophets. Now, one spirit rose up, okay, and spoke and breathed a threat to him, and he got flustered. Now, that is how much threats, okay, this spirit can wield against even the strongest prophetic voice in the land. The only solution, okay, to Jezebel is take her out. That's the only solution. The only so you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't um, negotiate with the Jezebel spirit. You don't say, maybe, 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 you know, let's allow. No, you don't, you take her out because if that spirit is not taken out, it will take you out. So now, by the time... Uh, Jezebel sent word <laughs> to Elijah. Elijah was shitting his pants. You can imagine. And then look at how the Bible puts it. But I'll say Elijah was afraid. The Bible, uh, the version of this, another version of actually says Elijah saw. What Elijah did was Elijah became aware that this was a real danger to my life for ministry. The Bible says, and he ran for his life. You can imagine that. And when he came to be a shepherd in Judah, he left his servant there. When he himself went a day's journey to the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. And that's what Jezebel will do. Jezebel will so threaten your life and ministry and put you at so much risk that you will doubt your call, you will doubt your anointing, you will become suicidal. Did you hear what I'm saying? A number of people have been in, in, intimidated and have, been, and have been controlled and have been manipulated to a point where they are taking their own lives. If you don't want that to happen in your system, your church, your family, okay, in your community, you have to locate that spirit that is causing that societal tendencies and destroy, destroy in the place of prayer, but also much more in the place of revelation of what you need to do. I'm going to come to that. But if that spirit is not taken out, it will take you out. Don't ever forget that. So you have to be very pragmatic, okay? You can't be laid back. You have to put on your shield of faith, okay, and bring that spirit down. So the scripture says in verse 4 that, so he sat down and he wished, it was, he wished for death. He says, I have had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Now, this is what a list prophet, the number one prophet in the land. But when Jezebel shows up against you and threatens you with death, you will lose your call. You will lose your faith. You will lose your, the only thing, again, I want to say, the only answer for a Jezebel spirit is take it out. Very important. Okay, now the Bible says in verse 10, so John, it says, he replied. So God began to speak with him, okay, and then this was Elijah's response. He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. They have turned on your altar. They have put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me too. <coughs> now, that's, that's it. In verse 15, the Bible says, the Lord replied him and said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Azael king over Aram. I want you to listen to this because I want to lay there as a principle that I'll begin to share. It says, when you get to Damascus, it says, anoint Azael. So there's something about one of the things that I'm going to be dealing with is the anointing. Very important. Anoint Azael king over Aram. Also, anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Meholah, to succeed you as prophet. 
Verse 17 says, Jehu will put to death anyone who escapes the sword of Azael. Elisha will put to death anyone who escapes the sword of Jehu. Yet, verse 18, yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed unto Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. So this was what God was trying to say to him. Now, Elijah's perspective was, I'm the only one who's righteous. I'm the only one who's doing the will of God. I'm the only one who's preaching this message. I'm the only one who's fighting this battle. God said, no, that's your perspective. That's your worldview. I want to give you a peek into my, into my worldview. I tell you, I have a remnant in this nation, at least 7,000 who have not bowed their knees to Baal, nor kissed him. What God is trying to say is that in every nation, however hopeless things may be, I always have a remnant. God always has a remnant, what I like to call the 7,000 company. There's always, you may not be aware of them. You may not be aware they exist, okay? In fact, between Obadiah and uh, Elijah, they thought that uh, they're just only about 101 prophets. That's what they thought. Because Elijah said, I have had 100 prophets kept safe, and Elijah thought he was the only prophet. But here God said to him, hey, God, there are 7,000 other people, okay, who are righteous, who are holy, who are blameless, and who have not been soiled by the corruption of your world. All right, so let me go back to the issue, the principle in Jezebel. There are two main systems that this has thrown up. The, the order of Jezebel, okay, which kills the prophetic, and then the order of Obadiah, which protects, okay, the prophetic. And both of them exist within a climate, within a spiritual climate. The, both of them exist within the same environment. One is walking towards the advance of the kingdom of God, it's called Obadiah, and the other one is intent on killing the advance of God's work and in the, the move of God upon the earth. And how, I want to explain to you a little bit more, how does this work? Let me talk about, first of all, about the order of, of, of Jezebel. If I have opportunity, I'll probably talk about Obadiah. But today, I want to really focus on the order of Jezebel. Now, the Jezebel order is a religious system. And this religious system seeks to do one thing, to counterfeit and to corrupt through worship of Jehovah. Okay. Now, if you want to have a clear understanding about the Jezebel spirit, you need to flip into the book of Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20 to 23 describes it this way. It says, nevertheless, God was speaking to one of the churches, okay, and this was in the New Testament. And I, I'm, I, I'm telling you this because many times people have a wrong understanding of what the Jezebel spirit means. And I want to, I want to, I want to share that with you, some things with you. So Revelation 2 verse 20 says, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. Okay, so there is ministry. So she said, I'm a minister, okay. Okay, that, that spirit is a, is a ministry thing. It's a religious system. It has religious authority or capacity or leaning. He says, I am a prophetess. He says, by our teaching, so there is doctrine. So that system has capacity or opportunity to emit, to emit doctrines or to emit teachings. In the Bible says, by our teachings, she misleads my servant into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. So, all right, so by the manifestation of this teaching ministry or of this religious system is misleading. Okay, that word mislead is the Greek word plato, which means to seduce someone or to cause someone to roam away from safety or roam away from truth or roam away from virtue. So this is what the spirit of Jezebel does. It, it seduces or it misleads or as the Greek puts it, it makes people to roam away, which means it takes them, their focus away from what their focus ought to be. It takes their emphasis away. Now, as the body of Christ, we have to be very careful not to allow this seduction to take, to take over our churches or to take over our ministries because that spirit is intent on misleading us, okay, into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. Not physically sexual immorality, but when we talk about sexual immorality, we're talking about multiple sleeping partners, multiple partners. So there can be a lot of a, 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 a defocusing into 
several things that are not important. Okay, you have to make sure that God alone is your focus and that the Spirit of God and the Word of God and the, your relationship with God is the most important thing in your life. You must not allow yourself to be able to roam away from virtue, to roam away from truth, okay, and to be misled by the spirit of darkness. Okay, very important. I, I want to lay old fair evidence on that. Verse 21 says, so, so I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she's unwilling. So I will cast her on the bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. Verse 23, I will strike at children dead. Now, this is a very strong word from the Lord. Now, that's, that's what God said. God is saying, I'm not even playing. I'm not even kidding. This is a spirit that will destroy your work and your life, your marriage, your ministry. You have to target it first. You have to deal with it first. Because if you don't deal with it, it's going to deal with you. And as a matter of fact, you have to make sure you annihilate it. God says, I will annihilate the spirit and even every produce from her. Okay. And that's how, I, I think that's how God thinks. You remember that when God sent Saul to go and kill the Amalekites, God said to him, wipe everything out. Now, that looks like, whoa, because, yeah, God is very intent on preserving his will and, and his purpose upon the earth. Okay, he said, Saul, wipe everything. Of course, you know, Saul didn't do that. And that's why he had a problem with God. God said, even the infants, when I was reading, I said, God. God said, even the babies in the womb, even the women, even the children, even the girls, why kill everything? Okay. And when sometimes when God gives us a decree, okay, to be ruthless against the spirit of darkness, sometimes we say, well, maybe let's negotiate with them. You don't negotiate with terrorists. That's what, <laughs> that's like Americans would say. You don't negotiate with terrorists. Okay. Yeah. So you deal with terrorism. You deal with intimidation. You deal with control. You deal with witchcraft. You kill manipulation. You, you prevail against it. You kill it dead. Amen. And I'll come to that in the book. This is, a, this, is a, this is a very, very hot thing in my heart. And I just want you to understand it. It says, verse 23 of Romans, uh, Revelation 2, it says, I will strike our children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and mind. And I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Very important. So while Jezebel is always going to be trying to seduce you or to manipulate you or to divert you, from your prophetic focus or your assignment in God, one of the things going to be using is going to be using flattery. It's going to be using enticing words. And the intent of that is to mislead you. I'm going to talk a little bit more of that later. Okay. How does, what is the way? How does it look like? Wow. What is the modus operandi that Jezebel's spirit uses to, to use flattery to mislead or to seduce you from your purpose? I want you to please wait for it more on this video. So Jezebel, is one of the manifestations then of the spirit of the Antichrist agenda in these last days. So we have to watch out for this. I've done a lot of teaching on unveiling the Antichrist. This is one of the manifestations of the Antichrist, of the Antichrist spirit. So we must never allow it <clears throat> to, to mislead our saints, to mislead our children, or to deceive us. Because when, once it does that, it will control the direction of your life or your ministry. It will also make something else the object of worship, not God. Now, as the body of Christ, and I want to, I want to believe that I, all of you here are speaking to me, okay, or I'm speaking to, okay, are, are, are people who have a relationship with the Lord. Now, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus, you need to have a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says God sent his only begotten son that everyone who will believe on him will not perish but I'll have everlasting life. So everlasting life is promised you through Christ because he paid the price. He came to the earth. He died. He shed his blood. He rose up on the third day so that your sins can be washed away so you can also be reconciled to God. So what are you waiting for? Come on, accept Jesus today. Now, for those who are accepting Jesus right now, I'm saying you need to know that as you come into Christ, it's important for you to make sure that God alone is the object of your worship. So your everything must focus on God, your time, your money, your resource, okay? Everything about you must focus on God as the only object of worship. But guess what Jezebel Spirit will try to do? It will try to put a lot of systems in place to make sure that your focus is taken away from the worship of God to the worship of self, to the worship of fame, to the worship of money, the worship of pleasure, 
I mean, when we talk about pleasure, we're talking about things like sex, and then alcohol, and entertainment. I mean, just anything outside God, it will try to keep your focus to worship every other thing apart from God. Now, on a lighter mode, you know, you, you know, one of the things that I saw very interesting in my nation, just a couple of days back, the country began to burn because there is a lot of hike in price, hike in price of fuel, hike in price of electricity bill. Everybody is concerned. In the time of the post-pandemic, people should not be able to sp have to spend so much money. But hey, the economy is going through a lot of pressure, not only in my economy, but all over the world. But guess what happened? And on Twitter, and Twitter is one of the social media platforms, the only kind of tweet that you saw, the number of tweets that you saw concerning the Nigerian situation, economic turmoil, or whatever it is, was just 10,000 10, tweets on fuel consumption, fuel increase, electricity. But guess what? There's also another event that's going on, a reality show called BB Niger. Do you know what the tweet was? 990,000 tweets on one Erika, whatever it is, lady that got evicted or whatever it is. People are even raising money for her. The whole nation is burning and people are not concerned. They are more concerned about who is sleeping with who, about who is being evicted, about whatever. They are even raising funds, okay? Go fund me for, for her. It's so crazy. Basically because the focus of the whole world, the focus of the nation has been taken away from what should matter about the life and the future of their children's economics, okay? But it's been taken away from them to focus on entertainment. And that, 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 that is... That's to show you the extent of how the spirit doesn't only just control the child. It controls political systems. It controls economic systems. It seeks to establish pleasure. Takes people focus away from what matters or what should matter to them to what shouldn't matter. What is your business, okay, with that which somebody else <laughs> is doing? <laughs> when you can't even pay your bills, when you can't even run your, your, your electricity. But that's the way life is right now. So you see the operation of the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of seduction, the spirit that takes your focus away from the real thing, okay, into that which is mundane, okay. And um, you only need to now check the other social media platforms like TikTok, like Instagram, you will see the things that trend, sex, gossip meals, and all the manner of, all manner of things. These things clearly are the operation of the spirit of the Antichrist manifested through, okay, the system of the world. So I want you to understand, I want you to follow me because you need to know that what we are dealing with, okay, has implication on your life and the things, okay, that you put as premium in your life. Now, as I read the scriptures, I discovered that God began to explain to us much more uh, in clear terms how to evade this and also what to look out for, okay? How to locate this spirit. So the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 gives me a little bit of insight and I just want to share it with you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse, verse 1 to 4, it says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if, some, as if from us, as though the day of Christ has come. All right, the day of Christ has not come yet. The events that are happening are just leading to it. So don't be afraid, don't be shaken, and don't be troubled. That's what God's saying to us, and that's what I'm saying to you right now. Verse 3 says, and that's where I want to go, let no one deceive you. So you see, one of the key things, principles, that will come on strong in this last day is the spirit of deception. Now, that is the spirit of Jezebel right there. The spirit of deception, the spirit of seduction, the spirit that makes you roam away from virtue and from truth, the spirit that misleads, those are the manifestation of the Jezebel spirit. Bible says, now, in verse 4, it says, this spirit opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or all that is worship. So you see, the principle, the target of the spirit of Jezebel is worship. It wants to take worship away from God. It wants to take the focus away from God being the one to worship. Now, even God, Jesus says, so that he sits as God. I don't know whether you have that in your Bible. So he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he himself is God. All right. So this spirit antagonizes. This spirit competes with the spirit of God. This spirit seeks to get the attention of all mankind, okay, away from God 
so itself. Now, when I teach about this, I want you to please clearly understand and watch out because in these last days, there's going to be something already that is taking your focus away from the worship of God to anything else. All right. Now, there are other spirits that work in tandem, okay, in agreement with the spirit of Jezebel. I told you for the spirit of Balaam, okay, which is about that. Again, about love of money and seduction. And then also the spirit of Nicolaitans, which is false doctrine. And all these things are synergistic to that spirit. So let me say this. The devil is intent, okay, on destroying the righteous seed. The devil is is intent on destroying the good thing that God wants to do with your life. You must never allow him. Okay, now let's run a little bit. Let me read the book of Revelation chapter 2 again. Revelation 2, 14 to 16. Revelation 2 says, Nevertheless, I have this few things against you. There are some of you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin, so that they ate food, sacrificed to idols, and committed sexual immorality. Verse 15 says, Likewise, you also have those who hold on to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, Otherwise, I will soon come to you and will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. So you see, whichever way you turn, you see the things being thrown up. Sexual immorality, idolatry, love for money, false doctrine, teaching of Balaam, teaching of Nocolitans, teaching of, 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 of Jezebel, who says she's a prophet. So you see, so you need to watch out for false doctrines, false teachings that takes your heart away from the worship of God. That is the first thing that you need to check out from, especially for those of you who are in the body of Christ. It's important what you feed your spirit with, what you are listening to, this preacher that is preaching, this church that you are attending, this man that is on the internet speaking to you, what, when you finish listening to him or finish listening to her, how do you feel? Do you feel more leanings towards the things of God, towards serving the Lord, towards sending yourself out towards the service of the kingdom of God? Or do you feel a lot more leaning towards serving self, serving fame, loving money more, loving your own ideas more, and loving your own separate things more? You be the judge. You have to have the sermon to be able to say, after I've been listening to this man preach, how did I feel? Okay, how more compassionate Compliant and how more committed or connected to the word of God am I? Or does it take me into fancy? Now, you need to understand this. So, let me now explain some things about Jezebel. Let me bring it a little bit home. What is Jezebel? First of all, let me say what Jezebel is not. Because when we, when we talk about Jezebel's spirit, people think what they think it is. Now, yeah, the Bible used the symbol of a woman, he that principle, okay, in a woman in the book of First Kings, but here you also saw the Bible speaking about Jezebel in Revelations. Okay, so clearly it's beyond a human being. It's a spirit. It's a religious spirit. It's a religious system. So let me say this first of all: Jezebel is not is not a woman. Jezebel is not your wife. Jezebel is not that woman who dresses well. In fact, in some instances they say Jezebel is a woman who makes up. Jezebel is not the woman who does make up. She's not that woman who packs her hair well and smells well. In fact, I want to say women must smell well, look good, okay, all right? Do a little bit makeup, don't make it too much, okay? Look good for your husband, okay, and for yourself. (laughs) It's very important. Or just be good and just be happy. So Jezebel is not necessarily a woman. And, of course, clearly is not a woman who makes up. Why do I say that? I'm going to read the scripture to you at a point. Because the Bible, when Bible was talking about Jezebel, it says when, he went to, when uh, she was faced with, Je- with Jehu, she was sitting, packing her hair, made, make, making up very well and looking beautiful and looking out the window. So clearly, if you say Jezebel is a woman who does makeup and Jezebel is a woman who makes her hair very, very nice, that means that also any woman, okay, for any reason that looks out of the window to the street is also Jezebel. No. So clearly, Jezebel is not a woman. Okay. It's a spirit. But God uses the spirit, okay, the life of people to explain to us the principles. Okay. All right. That's what the Bible is. The Bible is a book of, of, of wisdom or what my, one of my mentors called the book of technology 
And God hid this technology in the lives of men like Abraham and Isaac, women like Sarah and women like Deborah and women like Anna, okay? Or in this case, women like, like Jezebel. But Jezebel is much more than that. Jezebel is much more than just one woman who looks nice and looks made, made up. So don't please make, make that mistake. Now, because I know that it's on some churches they say well if you use makeup you are Jezebel no that's not correct that's not accurate okay Pastor Takumba Johnson will be right back please stay tuned when you get a taste of the truth you lose every appetite for falsehood and deceit at the City Gate School of Ministry we realize what time it is we know how important it is to tune believers hearts to heaven's frequency in order to make sense of contemporary happenings in comes the Understanding Times and Seasons Bible Course, UTNS, through a strategic exploration of scriptures and a well-defined prophetic thrust. Our participants get armed with knowledge and revelation that help them adopt the right posture in a world of end-time crisis and woes. Interested in enrolling for the new season of the Understanding Times and Seasons Bible Course? You can get in touch with us on telephone number plus two three four. 802-318-2030 or send an email to admin at citygatesom.ng or visit our website at www.citygatesom.ng Welcome back. What activates the spirit of Jezebel? I can tell you this for free. Number one, Jezebel's spirit tries wherever a leadership is weak and a vacuum for leadership exists. That's the best place for Jezebel's spirit. Whether it's a home, a family, whether it's a, it's a corporate, whether it's a, it's a nation, whether it's a, whatever it is, anywhere leadership is missing, Jezebel takes over. Because Jezebel must use sub authority and Jezebel runs on control. Okay, now, case in point, the book, the book, the Bible talks about Ahab. After the ordeal of Mount Camel, he ran home. To mommy, no, not to mommy. He ran home to his wife. Oh, oh, see what happened. Uh, they, killed, they killed the prophet. Elijah killed the prophet. So, of course, that's a, that's a CC man, okay? And that's to so say he was emotionally immature in everything. He was sullen. He was greedy, okay? And so, he was easily manipulatable. So, when there is no strong leadership, then the spirit of Jezebel gets activated. But whenever there is strong leadership, the spirit of Jezebel gets checked. And so if you want to deal with the spirit of Jezebel, one of the things you need to do, you need to raise yourself into leadership competence. You need to rise up from the place of immaturity, okay? Either as a polit political leader, okay? Or either as a social leader, or either as a religious leader, or a leader over your family, you have to man up, or you have to be, or you have to woman up. Whoever you may be, you may be a leader. If you are not careful as a woman, if you're not taking your place in your office, you have made you a manager and you're claiming weak, 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 your, your, your subordinate may take over and you sop you. He may take over, he may go and sleep with the boss and take your position and take decisions behind your back, yet they are under you. So you have to man up. You have to take your place. So one of the things that, check, that checks the Jezebel spirit is strong leadership because the spirit of Jezebel will always try to threaten Okay, it will always try to threaten even the righteous line. It will try to threaten it and even kill the righteous line. And that's one of the things also that you see in Jezebel's spirit. When, it, when you kill a false order of prophets, she tries to kill you too. When Elijah killed, okay, not Elijah, the people that Elijah inspired, killed 850 prophets of Baal, okay, Jezebel rose up and said, Elijah, you too, you will die. And that is really what the spirit of Jezebel will do. It will threaten you. And there are a number of you right now, even pastors, leaders of families, you are being threatened by systems. You are being threatened in, the, in your economy. You are being threatened in your health. You are being threatened by people, okay? You need to take your ground, stand your ground, build yourself, okay? Have the right conversations, okay? And take your authority back. Do not give your land over. Do not. All right, I was going to talk about the land of Naboth. Incidentally, Jezebel will work out something and kill the man and kill his children. You say, because I know that if I kill the man alone, his children will take over the land and still fight us. So I will do this. I will kill the man who is the owner of the land and I will also kill his seed. And that's what she did. 
Okay? Ahab and Jezebel. That spirit is a terrible spirit. It's a wicked spirit. It's a spirit that tries to annihilate God's plan and erase God's destiny for a people. So you must never allow it to fester. Do you hear what I'm saying? So Jezebel, in that regard, will manifest in the following ways. Rage and intimidation. He will try to feed off a desire for, for control and authority. Now, that's why I liken it to the spirit of Ataliah. I will probably speak about Ataliah another time. Okay, very important. Okay. Now, it manifests in, in, in form of sexual immorality. <clears throat> that's another way it manifests. Rage and intimidation. So, this was a... So, Jezebel intimidated Elijah. Elijah was afraid for his life and ran. Can you imagine a whole prophet running from a woman? Yes, that will happen. Because that spirit is a spirit of intimidation. But you can break it. Today, I want to stand in agreement with someone that you will break whatever has been intimidating you, scaring you, okay? You will break it in the name of Jesus. I stand with you today. And I, I want you to please wait for me. Wait for this because it's important. Now, apart from rage and intimidation, sexual immorality is one of the things. Then I spoke about false doctrine that centers on the worship of self, fame, okay? Worship of money, worship of personal preferences or appetites, okay? And then, of course, you know, prostitution, which I explained to you is a spiritual exchange, okay, with multiple partners. That's really what prostitution means, okay? A man sleeping with many women or a woman sleeping with many men, okay? Now, you're supposed to have your focus on the Lord, and I want to say this to those of you who jump from church to church. Make up your mind. Sit in a local church. Get, check out their ministry. Check out their doctrine. If you don't fit into your lifestyle or your value statement, go to another church, okay? Shop for church online, okay? Yeah, okay? And stick with one. I see people say, well, I have opportunity, and so I can have five services. I can go to five ministries. I can go to whatever it is, whatever it is. I can look, check this one, watch this one for two, 10 minutes. And they want to know, so some of you are about to leave this webcast right now, okay? All right, yeah, by all means, if it doesn't speak to you, leave. But if God is speaking to you already, okay, stay. Don't even allow anything to take your focus off you right now. Stay with me, praise the name of the Lord. Because you don't want to have spiritual exchange, okay, with multiple partners. Focus, have one wife, locate a ministry and stay, stay connected to it. I thought I would hear amen, <laughs> praise the Lord. Okay, and then of course, the spirit of, of, of witchcraft, or what I call divination, is one of the manifestations of uh, the spirit of Jezebel. So Jezebel manifests in terms of rage, intimidation, sexual morality, false doctrine, okay, and of course, witchcraft and intimidation. All right, so now that we know what Jezebel is not, what is Jezebel? Jezebel is a spirit, I've said that before, that are praised in various human lives. Jezebel is a spiritual order, one that tries to establish false worship. Okay? Now, in the case of the human Jezebel from the book of 1 Kings 16, she was a princess of Sidon, okay? an ungodly nation, okay? a pagan nation with many paganic rituals. And, and that's, what, that's what she did. The Bible said that she got married to her, and so automatically she replaced the worship of Jehovah God in Israel with the worship of Baal. I want to say to those of you who are single and young and unmarried, be careful who you marry. Okay, one of the things that will take you out, that will take you out of your prophetic journey in God is a wrong alliance. Either a wrong marriage alliance or a wrong business alliance or a wrong association anyway because evil association corrupts even the best of manners. So that was the case with Ahab. Ahab was a good Guy who is in covenant with God because he was an Israelite. But he went and married a, a woman of Sidon, okay, who all their life is pagan rituals. I mean, for pagans, okay, they had sex on their altars, okay. That's how they, that's how men, men, they had, they had lesbians, homosexuals, I mean, life sex. And that's what's happening. You're, you're, you're seeing right now the spirit of Jezebel taking over the systems of the world. A friend spoke about when he went to, a, to, a, to, the, to the U.S. I, I mentioned he went to a place in, in the U.S. called Florida, and he took his family, took his kids, five-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old, and of course, like 10-year-old kids with his wife. And he was excited. He booked from Nigeria, and they checked into a hotel, and it was D-Day for, for them to visit the beach. And when he got, got, to, got to the beach, the guard of the beach said to him, are you sure you want to go in here? He said, Dick, you can't come in here. Are you sure you want to go? He said, yeah, I mean, we paid for this. We want to go in here. The man said to him, he said, because this is a nude beach. This is a nude beach. The guy said, no, 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 no. He said, it's Nigeria. He doesn't know what the guy was. It's, it, the American guy's language didn't get it. He said, he thought he was, the American was saying, this is a new beach. He said, yeah, we paid for the new one. We paid, yes. We don't want whole beach. We want new beach. He didn't know the guy was saying nude, nude, that is naked. Because what I meant was, 
Everyone, if you got access into that beach, everyone was going to be naked. That is the spirit today. And you can imagine what it will be planted in the heart of kids when they see naked men and naked women. And that is what we're seeing even in reality shows, okay? Reality shows, I mean, all over the world, you are seeing people making out in broad daylight under the sheets. The spirit of Jezebel, okay, has been released. The spirit of immorality, the spirit of sexual immorality, which is the spirit of Jezebel. That's why they say today, sex sells. People are watching sex on Instagram, watching sex on Facebook, watching sex on YouTube. Pornography sites are spring up every day. They pop up on your system. They pop up. Okay, that is Jezebel at work. Its intention is to bring you to worship sex as against God, to worship your inordinate feelings as against the worship of God. God says, keep yourself holy, keep yourself pure. Jezebel says, you don't need to keep yourself pure. You can do sex, okay, and you can have a good time. Do not be deceived. It's a false spirit. It's a false worship. You are called to worship God, not your sex life. You are called to worship God, not your, not anything else. Okay, so don't ever lose sight of that. Woo! I feel the anointing of the Lord. Amen. Because we are unveiling the spirit of Antichrist. We are unveiling, okay, the spirit of Jezebel because we have to deal with the spirit once and for all. And so, you see the spirit of Jezebel takes control. The Bible says in 1 Kings 18, verse 19, I will not be able to read it, but it says that all these people were worshipping at Jezebel's place. They were, they were eating at Jezebel's table. All these all this prophets, the 850, okay, prophets were at the earth from Jezebel's hand, which basically means that Jezebel, okay, are taking total control of the spiritual climate of Israel. Now, she was a pagan, she came from far, far country, but now she has taken over the worship. The implication of that was now people didn't worship God anymore. They worshiped Baal, they worshiped Asherah, they worshiped the false gods. Because Jezebel had taken control of the religious system of Israel. And the implication of that was the king himself didn't know what to do. And then because of the false worship of God, God got angry and God sealed the land for three and a half years. There was no rain. That's the genesis. That's what caused the reason why there was no rain for three and a half years. We mean that God attacked the economy. Now, let me say this. If we don't arrest and we don't do something, okay, about the illicit sex, about the increase of rape, about the inordinate uh, desire for people to have sex and to showcase sex on public reality TV, if we don't nip it in the body, if the church doesn't deal with it, we are going to bring a curse over our nation because we are going to be having, okay, teenage sex, okay, rape on the increase. We are going to be having, okay, unwanted pregnancies. We are going to be killing babies in abortion. And when that happens, the, the blood of these babies, okay, will cry out to God and God will do something about it. Is the reason why nations struggle. Whenever people are away from God, worship of God, the nations struggle. Let me tell you that one of the things that God has done that has helped Africa to overcome the pandemic was because there are a number of people, I would say the 7,000 companies in Africa, who have not bowed their knees to the spirit of Baal, who have not bowed their knees to the spirit of Jezebel, who are praying, who are holy, who are blameless. Okay, People like yourself and myself, because we stayed pure. Yes. Yeah. Pressure was on us, okay, to buckle, but we stayed praying, we stayed fasting, we stayed seeking the face of God in prayer daily. Now, the whole world testifies that Africa has been saved. I guess tell you something, Africa was saved from the fatality because there's a praying church. Because there's a 7,000 company who have not bowed their knees to bear. And I give God praise for the deliverance that God has given to us and that is still given to us. We're not, we're not out of the woods yet, but God has given us more and more deliverance, amen, until this pandemic, until this virus, okay, will be a thing of the past, amen. But again, we can say this because we know how the realm of the spirit works, okay? And so we have to continue to govern that realm. We must never abdicate it to the spirit of Jezebel, to the spirit of sexual immorality, to the spirit of idolatry, to the love of money, which is the root of all evil. We must never, and I want to challenge you, believer, child of God, you must do everything you can to make sure we don't abdicate that place to the enemy. Okay, so I've spoken about what Jezebel is. Jezebel's spirit is a spirit that will praise through every facet. 
not just church, okay? Systems of economics, systems of politics, systems of family, it operates everywhere, okay? It's also a spiritual order, I spoke about. Number three, it's a, it's a spiritual leadership of the nation. Like I said to you, even though Ahab was the political leader, he was the king, he was the political leader, but the real leader, the spiritual leader who was in charge of worship, and worship is that we provoke the presence of God. The real leader of worship was Jezebel, okay? Worship was not under our command, it was not under our influence. We have to unseat that spirit. That's where it's trying to take our nation away from the Lord, taking our, take our young people away, okay, from church and from the kingdom of God. We have to wrestle it down and break it down in the name of the Lord. Amen. All right. Also, Jezebel builds a parallel religious system to divert attention away from the true priesthood. Now, the true priesthood, okay, that God had for Israel was you went to the temple of God and then the Levites and the priests, they served the animals and then they killed the animals and the sacrifices and then God was glorified because God gave them a right order of worship. Don't forget where we started off this journey of prophetic was worship, okay? And we must never forget that. It's all about worship, okay? It's all about the glory. I'm teaching you this so that the glory of God can come back upon the earth, that we can bring back through worship. I don't want you to ever lose sight of that. You may have enjoyed the story, but it's not a, I'm not a storyteller, okay? I am a minister of the gospel, and I'm saying to you, we have to bring back the worship of God back, okay? All right, so the worship system, the original worship system was the priesthood and the Levites, okay? As they sacrifice the animals to God, and then they keep the bond offering, and then the aroma goes to God, and then God blesses their land. Now, when, Jer when, when Jezebel stepped into the, into, the, into the case, she began to sacrifice to Baal and to Asherah, okay? So God was deprived of worship that was due to him, okay? And so they abandoned the worship of Jehovah to the worship of Jezebel's gods of Baal and Asherah. Now, that's what Jezebel will do. Jezebel will create a parallel system. So you have to be careful as you navigate your way, okay, in these last days. There's going to be a lot of deceptive spirit and system that will try to present church. I say it's church. It may, not, it may not be biblical, but it's still church. Okay? It may not be holy, but it's still church. Okay? The focus may not be Christ. It may not be Christ-centric, but it's still church. Okay? I mean, we have a building, and then we still have a little bit of things that we do. Like, but, and there's a whole lot of religious system today that looks like the kingdom of God, but it's not the kingdom of God. It's your job to find it out. Because there is a parallel system, a parallel religious system that has been created. You have to discern it. How do you do that? By continuing looking into the word of God so that God by his spirit can help you to discern through that which is true from that which is false. Again, I kind of emphasize that the spirit will disrupt everything because it will intimidate the prophetic. There are many times even me as a leader, okay, okay I get scared sometimes because I get challenged, I get attacked. By demonic systems, I get attacked by demonic judicial systems, by demonic political systems, by demonic economic systems, okay? And so that's why I never stop praying. I never stop governing the heavens. I never stop fasting, okay? We, we say we are the apostolic church. We, we take authority in the realm of spirit. I teach prophetic stuff because it's when we are able to know what's the man of God and we are inspired by his spirit that we can know how to deal with the demons in our day. And every one of us will have to deal with the demons in his day. You have to deal with the demons in your family. You have to deal with the demons in your sector. Did you hear what I'm saying? You, you, yes, you, you have to deal with the, with the demons in your community where you live. Okay, you have to take authority. You have to take responsibility. You have to govern that territory in prayer and fast if you have to fast. Pray all night if you have to pray all night, okay? And do everything you have to do. Evangelize, share the gospel, okay? Bring people under your your wings, okay, and mentor them and disciple them, whatever you have to do. But this spirit of unrighteousness must be subdued. Jezebel must not be allowed to thrive. Amen. Because if we can deal with it, with this spirit, then we can overcome every power of the enemy, okay? So this Jezebel spirit is a, is a killer, what I call a killer undertaker of prophet. And we must never allow that to happen because we saw that she killed all prophets. That's what the Bible says. The testimony that was born of Jezebel was Jezebel was killing the prophets of the Lord. That's the testimony. So don't let Jezebel kill your vision. Don't let Jezebel kill your calling. Okay. Don't let Jezebel sacrifice you on the altar of Baal. You have to fight for your life. Fight for the life of your ministry. Fight for the life of your family. Fight for your marriage, amen, praise, and a lot of marriages are under attack. 
Okay, you have to fight for your marriage. I challenge all men, okay, to fight for their marriage. Love your wife more. I challenge all women, okay, love your family more. Serve your family more. Amen. Walk together with your spouse. Amen. Very, very important. If we will do that, we will break the spirit in the name of the Lord. Okay, if this, this spirit corrupts the Holy Seed, I already spoke about that before, and tries to seduce us to get us away from the Lord. Again, one thing I want to say is that this spirit is a spirit of witchcraft. I know I'm saying a lot of things to you, but hey, I need to deal with this. It's the spirit of witchcraft. How does it work? Now, when you understand this, how the spirit of witchcraft works, then you can know how to deal with it. The Bible describes witchcraft like disobedience. That's how the Bible puts it. And um, when, I, when I read the book of 2 Kings chapter 9, I was very excited because Jehu, okay, and I'll talk about the Jehu anointing later, was, was talking to, was trying to give us, okay, an insight into why, okay, he had to come on the scene. He says, when Joram saw, 2 Kings 9, 22, he says, when Joram saw Jehu, he asked, have you come in peace, Jehu? How can there be peace, Jehu replied, as long as all the idolatry and witchcraft of your mother Jezebel abounds. So Jezebel was, an, was iconic for idolatry and witchcraft. What is witchcraft? Witchcraft is expressed through rebellion and disobedience to God's specific instruction to you. Now, when we talk about witchcraft, people think that, well, it's growing wings and flying at night. No, that's not witchcraft. The Bible puts it clearly. It says, for the sin of disobedience is like witchcraft. Rebellion is like divination. So when God gives you an instruction, okay, either to go here or to come here and you disobey him, or you try to negotiate with him. That is witchcraft. That was what Balaam did. God told Balaam, don't go to cut the simple. Balaam said, let me try. And he went. And that was witchcraft. The Bible says, and God rebuked the prophet's madness. So there are a lot of madness that you and I exhibit. Okay? That madness is witchcraft. How does it operate? It operates when we rebel against God's instruction. Either through his word or through the Holy Spirit that it speaks to us. We must be careful, friends. Not to, not to flout God's instruction. Because when you do that, you attract the spirit of witchcraft yourself. So you don't debate with God. You obey him. I want to say that again. Maybe we say, well, God, can we negotiate? You never negotiate with God. God is the one to be obeyed. If God gives an instruction, you say, yes, sir. If God says, jump, you ask, how high? That's what you should do. You say, well, God, is it a good idea for me to jump? You really think, I'm, am I not going to fall if I jump? God says, jump, you jump, my friend. Okay, Because it's what... Believers need to understand because when God calls you to do something, to go to a place, he has a plan there. He has a plan that he wants to achieve through that place. And so when you refuse to go or you are your foot dragged to go, you have bought the process. Then God will choose someone else. Now you saw that story of Eli Elijah. When Elijah was foot dragged and said, oh, they want to kill me. He goes to Sarah because Jezebel was attacking. God says, okay, now you have expired. Go and anoint Elijah. If you read through Elijah, Elisha was a man who was busy in his business. God says, anoint him. He's going to take over from you. And he's going to do the work that you fail to do. So when God gives you an instruction for ministry. Now, God, has, God gave me a word for you today. And so I'm preaching it. You can imagine, if I fail to bring this word to you because I feel you may be angry, you may not be happy, you may not sound nice, God will raise another person to bring this prophetic teaching. And so I don't want to be replaced by God. So when God speaks to you, however tough, okay, you have to do it. Why? Because to rebel, okay, is the sin of divination. 1 Samuel says that. 1 Samuel 15 verse 20. He says, for rebellion is, the, is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you. What was Saul's offense? God ordained Saul. God calls anointed Saul for a reason. Go and waste the Amalekites. Why did my people were coming from Egypt when I would bring them? They will leave them. They were not nice to them. And I said I was going to judge them. And so I'm calling you as a king. Go and waste them. Kill their kids, kill their wives, kill their children. Waste everything. But what did Saul do? Saul killed a bit of stuff, but he kept a lot of stuff that were appealing, like the beautiful women. And then what more? He now, he now spared their king. The first person that he's supposed to take out he spared him. God became hungry with him, and God said, your, your kingdom is over. We have to be very, very cautious about our work with God. If God gives instruction, don't disobey. If all, don't half obey. I love what my father, or I'll call him my father-in-law, Pastor Yadiboy, because he was the one that gave birth to me in the spirit. He preached for me, I got saved, and he was my first Bible teacher. Amen. He taught me the Bible. He taught me about 
look at scripture. He taught me about Bible study. Okay, he asked, that's, that's my grandpa, praise him. But that's, that's my father in the Lord, amen. The original man who, bought, who preached to me, I got saved. Now, he said this, one of the things, he was teaching on this somewhere, somewhere but he says, half obedience is worse than disobedience. Because when, you, when God gives an instruction, you obey him. You don't say, well, God, let's negotiate. You don't negotiate with God, okay? All right, praising him. God doesn't want to negotiate with you. God wants to be God. He wants to be sovereign. So let's not forget that half obedience is worse than disobedience, says Pastor Adeboy. Amen. Now, the, the spirit of Jezebel is a manipulative spirit. We said that quite a lot. And um, a perfect model of it is how a corrupt political system can be, okay? And a political corrupt system can actually kill destinies. Because when the executive becomes egotistic, governor or president becomes egotistic, or where there is legislation that is moribund, that is no longer viable for today, or wherever there is perversion of justice system, then that is Jezebel at work. Because what it wants to do, it wants to use those legislation or those executive fiat or those uh, perverted justice system, okay, to cut your destiny, what is destiny. So this was what happened to Naboth, the Jezreelite. They, they trumped up a case against him, okay, raised up false evidences by true false witnesses, okay, and they killed him. They killed him, they killed his children. End of story. My wife was telling me about a story she read about a couple of days back about an 18-year-old boy called Adebayo Ojo from Ekiti. In 2003, they just picked him somewhere randomly. He didn't do anything. Very good boy. But because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, they picked him. And then they, 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 they said some people were car killed, some armor robbers killed. And then they, they framed him for it and they sent him to death. He was supposed to have been killed, but for the intervention of the then, uh, then governor, I think Fayoshe, who says, no, I'm not going to sign the death warrant. That was 2003. Fast track for 2019. There were many interventions between that in 16, that 16 years. The boy came out, okay, and he says, we now see that you actually never committed that crime. But if that governor, okay, had not been sensitive not to sign that executive fiat, okay, to kill him, that boy will have been history. And a lot of people have had their destinies cut short, okay, just because some egotistic executive decided to sign a death warrant. You gotta be careful so that the, the spirit of Jezebel doesn't take you. Because that spirit, okay, will take over justice. So so Naboth was, was accused falsely. They wrote false witnesses against him. They said, this guy has done this and done this. He didn't do anything. His, own of, his offense was he refused to give his father's inheritance to the king, to Jezebel's husband. That was his crime. He got, he got, he got killed. His kids got killed because there was a perverted justice system. Now, I'm trying to say that as a nation builder, okay, we need to continue to attack the Jezebel spirit over, over a justice system and decree against false judges, corruptible judges, decree against egotistic executives, decree against moribund policies and legislation. Okay, do you hear what I'm saying? So we have to be government and we have to kill the spirit of Jezebel even in our political system in the name of, not, don't, not, not complain, do something, okay? Let's get together and pray fully, okay? Deal with it. Okay, let me also say, say this. It's a seductive spirit. It is said the spirit that seeks to silence the prophets of God. And I can just go on and go on and go on and on. One of the ways it does that, let me tell you how one of the ways that spirit seduces God's prophets is by telling them nice things, is by giving them you know, false prophecies or by using flattery. Okay, the, by using flattery. Look at the book of 2 Kings with me, 2 Kings 9, verse 10 to 31. So as I bring this to a, to a, to a close, now taxing towards a close, and I'll, then I'll talk to you about how to overcome that spirit. Okay, now, 2 Kings 9, verse 30, because it says, When Jezebel heard that Jehu had arrived in Jezreel, she made herself up, put on eyeshadow, and arranged her hair. And I'm reading this from the Message by Fashion. It says, She made herself up, put on eyeshadow, and arranged her hair, and posed seductively at the window. When Jehu came through the city gate, she called out, So, how are things, Zimri? You dashing king killer. Now, you need to understand, this guy's name was not Zimri, his name was Jehu. But this woman knew her time was up. She had heard that her son had been killed and that her empire is being wrecked. And now she stood out okay, from the balcony and was still trying to seduce, trying to use flattery, okay? Trying to use a word of fact to flatter and to fester Jehu's ego. Yeah, and say, hey, dashing, hey, handsome. I, I, have you come in peace? But you don't come in peace against Jezebel. <laughs> the only
only thing you do for Jezebel is you kill Jezebel. So this was what Jehu did. Jehu looked up. The Bible says, read the story. The Bible says, Jehu looked up and says to the people, Who is with me? Let them throw her down. That's what he used. I mean, Jehu is a maniac. And I want to say that you need to be a maniac to deal with the spirit. This spirit is not playing. Jezebel is not even playing him. She's going to waste, she's not going to waste your marriage, waste your health, waste your ministry, waste your politics, waste your economy, kill your kids. You don't play game with that spirit. If the anointing of God comes upon your life, and I'll come to that in a moment, okay, you do the right thing. Okay, so she said, who is it me bringing out? The Bible says this, and this is amazing. The Enochs, there were two or three Enochs, okay, that were with Jezebel. Now, what are Enochs? Enochs are men, okay, that have been turned to women. Men that have been reprogrammed to act like women. So this a hero was you will dress like a woman, okay? Will have earrings on her nose, earrings on her hair, pierce her lips, pierce whatever. Is a he, but it looks like a she. <laughs> okay. Now that's what Enoch said. So after a while they start, they dress like women, okay? And then they get crash castrated. Because kings, you know what happens about, about Enoch? Kings get eunuchs. They get eunuchs to take care of their wives. But they make sure that those eunuchs can't sleep with them. So they castrate them. And they make sure that their malehood is taken from them. So the eunuchs now begin to act like women. Yes, please. Yes. That's how they, sometimes you do. Know, like, hi. So what you call homosexuality today, that's how eunuchs do. Okay. It's not today. It's always been the spirit of Jezebel, okay, makes a eunuch of men. But the anointing of God, okay, will break the yoke over those that have been intimidated. Because the moment Jehu spoke and said, who is with me? Throw her down. The scripture says that the, 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 the eunuchs who forever have been faithful to Jezebel, curing her, pampering her, doing her beating, they were the ones themselves. That's what the anointing with deliverance will do that. They were the ones themselves that took their principal and threw her from the story from the, from the, from the altitude. And the scripture says, her blood was spattered on the ground. And that was the end of Jezebel. I want to say to you, there's an anointing that is required to bring judgment to this. And that's why I want to tell you, what are the things? Four things that must happen. Four things that would make you overcome the Jezebel, the Jezebel spirit. Of course, all these four things are in the anointing of Jehu. Praise the Lord. I really want to ask you to read the book of 2 Kings chapter 9. I won't be able to read it for you. Okay, read the book of 2 Kings chapter 9, and then you will see these things there. So these are, there are five key words. There are five key words that I want to really leave you with today. Okay, number one is the anointing. If you're going to overcome the Jezebel spirit, you need the call of God on your life. You need to recognize there's a call of God on your life. And I want to say to someone out there, you may not have walked in it, but there's a call. There's something God called you to do. Okay. The second thing, because of time, is you need to discover your purpose. And you need to have a self-discovery of your purpose, what God called you to do or to be. The third thing is you have to have a focus. It's important. You have to have focus. And the fourth thing is destination. And then the fifth thing, you have to have a finish. I was, I was, I, I, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me take some time to explain this thing again. Number one, your anointing. Because the anointing will break. What breaks the yoke, okay, of intimidation and control, okay, over those eunuchs was the anointing of God over Joe. Joe didn't just speak. He spoke anointedly. He says, who is with me? Throw her down. That those words are anointed. Now, you need to understand that there's an anointing of God upon your life. You need to walk in that anointing. So I want to challenge everyone here that you walk in the anointing of the Lord, okay? Not self-ambition, not zeal without knowledge. Find out what has God anointed me to do. I know what God has called me to do. God has called me to be a prophetic teacher. That's why I don't even try to be anything else. I just want to teach God's will and teach God's word. So it's important. Number two, you have to discover your purpose. You have to listen to what God okay, is saying concerning you in his word. One of the things that you saw in, in, about Jehu was in 2 Kings 9, verse 25 to 26, the Bible says Jehu knew that it was God's purpose to cleanse okay, the house of Ahab. If you read that scripture, it says, because God has spoken those words of prophecy concerning this man, that his family will be judged. So I am just executing that. He told his friends that. He says, in accordance with the word of the Lord. So we need to, you need to know what is the word of the Lord for you. You need to self-discover your purpose. 
you have to, in God, go into God and say, God, what is my, what did you call me to be? Did you call me to be this or did you call me to be that? And God will hear you. God will answer you. You will be able to pick up a word from the Lord. Number three, you need to focus your purpose. Now, once you have discovered your anointing and you have discovered your purpose, you have to focus your purpose. Very important. You have to narrow cast. You cannot be called to do everything. Don't allow yourself to be distracted, seduced, or to be or to be to roam. Okay, don't roam. You have to be focused. Be laser focused. You know what? You know how you can focus a laser, and it can cut through steel. Even water that is focused, water that is focused can cut through steel. Okay, so you have to be very narrow. Okay, in your casting, you have to be laser focused. You have to refuse yourself to be to be to be seduced by Jezebel's spirit. Okay. You must not. Now, this is one of the things I want to leave you with. Uh, it's important. I read a story about eagle and raven. The raven always likes to pick up food that the eagle has, has killed. Okay? So he will try to pick up the food. And then he will patch on the eagle and be eating the head of the eagle. And be patching on it just to take the food of the eagle. And then the eagle does, you know what the eagle does? The eagle just moves into the, into the hair and begins to soar and begin to fly. Yeah, the raven continues on it. But you know, at the point, at the point, the eagle flies high because it, high, it flies highest into the top of the mountain. And then the raven, because he cannot breathe anymore, because the oxygen level at that altitude of the eagle, the raven can't survive it. So the raven by itself drops off. This is what I'm trying to say to you. In spite of whatever it is like throws at you, keep doing what you're doing. Be focused. Stay connected. Okay? Whatever God has called you to do, stay with it. Look at Moses. The Bible says that Moses was sent by God to give 10 plagues to Egypt. He did the first plague, second plague, third plague. Do you, know, do you notice that each of the plagues was replicated by the magicians of Egypt? They tried to replicate that everything. So it wasn't spectacular. So the people say, well, our magicians can do it. Which was the reason why Pharaoh refused to let them go because, hey, whatever plague Moses released, his magicians to do the same. Moses threw down a rod. His magicians threw down their rods. Both rods became snake. But of course, you know that Moses' rod swallowed their own rod and they took it back. But even at that, they were still one. So there's going to be a level. You have to keep taking your game one notch higher until the tenth plague when God released the plague of the firstborn. And they couldn't answer for that. There is always a level, okay, in life where as you pivot your vision and pivot your focus and pivot your calling and keep doing what God has called you to do, a time comes when the spirit of Jezebel can answer for you. So you don't get distracted. You don't, you don't get into controversies. You keep doing what you're doing. Be laser focused. I don't know. I can't even <laughs> tell you enough of that. Very important. Now, number four, you have to make up your mind that you are going to arrive at your destination. You have to shun that life of fantasy and say, I know where I'm going. I'm not there yet, okay? But I know what God has said to me. And the Bible says, concerning Jehu, Je 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 he rode like a maniac. You need to read 2 Kings 9. The Bible says, he rode on the sea. When they saw him on the horizon, they said, wow, that riding is like the riding of Jehu. He rides like a maniac. That's the exact word they use. So I was saying this, I want to give you license. You have to be a maniac in your call. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to be a nice person. I want to be a maniac in my call. I want to do this. I want to teach this. I want to preach this. I want to slay Jezebel. I want to proclaim the word of the Lord. I don't even want to play to the gallery. I want to be maniacal. I want to be driven. And that's why we've been doing this for the last 20 something years and we're still doing it because we know that ultimately Jezebel will be judged. Hey, hear me. Whatever it is God has called you to do, stand true to it because ultimately the spirit of Jezebel will be judged over you and you will pivot and you will rise in the name of the Lord. So stay focused. Amen. Did you hear me? Stay focused. Did you hear me? Arrive at your destination. Make up your mind. What was his destination? I am going to slay Je Je Jezebel. Why is Jezebel? She is in the palace. Who is with her? The Enochs are with her. I don't even care whether the Enochs are going to stand against me. I'm riding. And she rode furious. And then she got there and by the anointing she spoke, who is with me? Throw her down. And see, the, 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 the wall is already open for your ministry or for what God called you to do. You need to step onto it. There are people in that system, in that banking system, oil system, that are waiting for your voice. Let your voice be heard. Arrive at a destination and you'll be amazed that people have already been prepared for you. Finally, finish the task. It's very important. Finish it off. Okay. 
Don't get there and then and go, and go, and, and go, and go start eating. Jesus gave us this very powerful principle in the book of John chapter 4, verse 34. I love it. He says, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. That's a very profound statement. Because they were giving him food. He said, no, guys, it's not time for food. That's exactly the same thing Jehu did. Jehu did. Jehu made sure that he finished the task. What was the task? Slay Jezebel. What was the task? Overcome the spirit of control. What was the task? Overcome the spirit of intimidation. What was the task? Slay the spirit of witchcraft. And when you do that, then you can now eat. So it was only after he had slain Jezebel, okay, that he sat, the Bible says, he sat down to eat and to drink. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So don't have fun. Don't relish it. Don't lose your God yet. Finish your task. Finish your assignment. Okay. Whatever it is that you, are, you know God is speaking to you how to do, do it. Let your voice be heard and let your life count for something. When you do that, then you are walking the Father's work. Jesus said, let us walk the work of the Father's kingdom as long as it's called today. I don't believe that if you put your heart to all these principles, truly, Jezebel will be slain in your day and a new order of God's will and of the worship of Jehovah will be restored in your sector. Don't forget, worship is not just singing. Worship is lifestyle. Worship is how we build businesses, how we run our families, how we glorify God in the neighborhood, how we build impact, how we create designs and we initiate ideas, how we bring innovations into our sector. All those things will lead to the worship of Jehovah because people will ask and say, I want to serve your God too. And when we get to that point where people can say, I want to serve your God too, then we have, brought, we, have, we have brought people to God and we have brought through worship. I do believe and pray that today the Lord has used me to bring you into the place of effectiveness and the place of discovery. So I ask today that the Lord release upon us in our, in our day a Jew generation that will finish the destruction of, of every work of Satan and that will lead the church of God back into a new season of righteousness and a new intimacy with the purposes of the Lord. Until I come your way again, I bless you in the name of the Lord. I say, it's time for you to rise. It's time for you to rise like Jehu. It's time for Jezebel to be slain. Amen. When you get a taste of the truth, you lose every appetite for falsehood and deceit. At the City Gate School of Ministry, we realize what time it is. We know how important it is to tune believers' hearts to heaven's frequency in order to make sense of contemporary happenings. In comes the Understanding Times and Seasons Bible Course UTNS. Through a strategic exploration of scriptures and a well-defined prophetic thrust, our participants get armed with knowledge and revelation that help them adopt the right posture in a world of end-time crisis and woes. Interested in enrolling for the new season of the Understanding Times and Seasons Bible course? You can get in touch with us on telephone number plus 234-802-318-2030 or send an email to admin at citygatesom.ng or visit our website at www.citygatesom.ng for more counseling, all prayers, and spiritual support, please contact us at 0802-318-2030 on WhatsApp. You can also visit us at www.thecapstoneonline.com.